Guinness will put the record for being the fastest built modular hotel of its time back in 1968. It had set a record breaking 202 working days. And that's only about seven months and a half. That's pretty fast, right? You see, back then in 1968, San Antonio was celebrating the World's Fair. And earlier, we were celebrating 200 years of the city. We had a lot of people come out here, but only thing is, we do not have as many hotels back then as we do nowadays. A local contractor in HP factory built this hotel here. His company then, his company built the first four floors here on site, along with the elevator shaft. The other rooms were built eight miles south of San Antonio at the same time in a factory, a warehouse, and the assembly line was set up out there. Now, these guys would work on the rooms five days a week, 15 hour shifts a day. They were on weekends, on holidays. They still managed to get the entire building done. Once the rooms are finished, the rooms are already prefabricated and ready to go. The beds were put in, the sheets, the, the pillows are put in place, the shower curtains, curtain rods, the dressers, the bathtubs, you name it, they were ready. The rooms were put on flatbed trucks, they were brought back down here to location. The company brought in a train, they even, uh, they came in and stacked each room on top of each other, locking them up like giant Legos. We like to call this hotel the Lego Hotel. It got done in 202 working days, 500 rooms were completed. Just in time for the World Series 68. And you get a better view of the hotel here to my left in the very top here. You get a better view of it. It's the second upside down scene. But we're going to pass up our third and final dump on my right hand side of the building. Okay. We have three dots we know. Coming up around the bend, straight ahead, underneath the boat bridge here. We're going to go ahead and go through the oldest neighborhood in San Antonio now. We're about to go and see the historic, the beautiful La Vellita little village. Now, La Vellita started out as home for the Spanish settlers and their families back around 1722. In the 1800s, the German and French settlers settled in this entire area as well. As you can see today, we do have a couple of restaurants out here. We also have some live music out here. You can also visit the Arctic Crab Shops that are open now at La Vellita, which you can visit and check out the stairs here at the Artisan River Theater. It's an open air theater. It's about 800 guests to my left here. The stage is on my right. Behind the stage are five bells. The five bells honor the five nations of San Antonio. The middle one is named in honor of Robert Hutman, the architect and engineer of the River Rock. Very young architect, 27 years old, known in San Antonio as the father of the River Rock. Now, we're going to go underneath the Mujitas Bridge here, right above you, and in honor of Mujitas Hernandez. He's a final star that we've opened at a very same stage for 26 years on our beautiful show kit every summer called Fiesta Noche del Rio. Very popular show in the start of the time that you'd like to be coming up here. You'll see the art sculpture to my right up ahead of us. The art sculpture that you see on my right is called El Camino de Galvez. This is part of the Bristol Western Art Museum, which opened back in 2013. It's also the site of the main public library back in 1930. They opened for 1960. They made a renovated and fixed up the building. <laughs> Turn it into the bridge. We're going to go underneath Presta Street Bridge now. It's a cast iron bridge now. We're going to go ahead and go underneath it. Here in a few seconds. Once you clear the bridge here, you'll see these giant trees out here. These trees that you see out here throughout the railroad. Go 
gold and cypress print. You lose the lead to the winner. You'll see a heart shaped child coming up on the right. On that island, you'll see the two benches and a sculpture. The two benches right there, the sculpture that you see on my right, was placed there in 1991 to commemorate the very first Catholic mass held here along the river on June 13, 1691. It's called Father Mastinay's Table. The island today is known as Marriage Island, and we do average about 300 weddings a year. It is set to bring good luck and fortune for those that do get married on that island, too. Are you? You got a buddy, man. They got married on that island three times. So. Uh, Let's take the chart. We're driving through the Navarro Street Bridge Tunnel now. Know that we've been built across the back in the 1800s. The settlers would come out here, or would water the horses, wash their buggies. Yet the river was once very, very shallow. There's not so much wider than for the sidewalk building that even got here. It was a lot bigger here. Teddy Roosevelt and his rough riders who also crossed the Yellowstone Crossing in the 1900s. The reason why, right here to my right, is the Western Hotel, and which was the uh, El Frank Saddle Company in 1901, where they would come out here and purchase saddles for their horses. It became one of the largest manufacturers in the world at If you take a look directly in front of the boat now, you'll see the red building with a green rooftop. The Beehive building right there is the Bear County Courthouse, which opened up in 1897. It's one of the oldest continuously operating courthouses in the state of Texas, which is made of Texas red granite. <laughs> one of my favorite buildings to talk about now and to look at, it kind of reminds me of the Ghostbusters building. It's the building on my left here. Uh, this is the Tower Life building. It is known as the Smithson Young Tower. It is a gothic style building. If you take a look at the very top of this building, you can see the gargoyles, which are part of the drain system. So when it rains, the water comes out their mouth. Now the two architects that designed this building were very superstitious, so they decided to put some spooky faces on the second floor below the windows on the wall. You guys see the faces? The faces were put on there to ward off evil spirits and bad luck. Well guess what? It didn't work. Yeah, here's why. The building opened up three days before the stock market crashed. The Great Depression of 1929. The brothers were forced to sell the building to pay back back taxes. The building cost about three million dollars to build, which was a lot back then. The building was sold and auctioned up by the city of San Antonio in 1929 for twenty-seven thousand dollars. Today, half of that building is still empty. Uh, the other half, they're attorney offices today. Okay. Uh, we're going to go through a floodgate now, guys. Floodgate number four. We're going to take a right turn here. We're going to enter the deepest part of the river walk. <laughs> we do not go left, guys. But if you take a look down to the left hand side of the boat here, all the way down, you'll see a red and green light. Floodgate number five is going to get past there. There's a 50 foot drop to the back now, which that means we are now inside the deepest part of the river. Here. We're at 15 feet. Uh, straight ahead, right above you, you'll see the Love Locks on De La Rosa Street. Just like Paris France, guys, if you're in love, you can bring a lock out here. Uh, make sure you put your name on the lock and put the date on there. Yes, uh, lock it up. What are you doing, Keith? You're crossing in the river. There's a lot of keys out here. Okay? You, you'll see more locks above me. So if you're in love, guys, and you're thinking about bringing out a lock, bring a combination lock, right? But you never know. You never know. <laughs> in 1921, San Antonio had a flood out here. The water level rose about 10 feet high above street level, flooding out the entire downtown area. Sadly, that year, 59, 59 were lost and a lot of property damage uh, happened that year as well. 1924, Emily Edwards and Rena Maverick Green is co founded the Conservation Society to oppose the demolition of the 1859 market house that sat right in the middle of this channel. They were trying to save the building or have the city built around the market, but the city declined. They actually had to demolish the building. The reason why? They did it, the city didn't want to make the, they didn't want to flood out here again. The only way to prevent that is to tear down the building to uh, straighten up the river. That's when the city came in and they started the flood control project. The 
Riverwalk opened up in 1941. The city of San Antonio was able to fund Mr. Robert Huntsman a grand total of $430,000. That's how much it cost to get the Riverwalk started. So imagine if he would have started today, it would have been a lot more than that, right? A lot more. Uh, we're going to go through our last gates here, guys. Uh, before we do enter it, right here to my left is the oldest tree on the Riverwalk. Here to my left here. It's twin ball cypress tree said to be over 300 years old. Now, floodgate 3 does work like a car garage door. Weighs about three tons. Here's how the floodgates work. Whenever we do get the heavy rain in San Antonio, what city officials park police will do, they'll take the drive out to the shallowest part of the river, mainly by the restaurant. So keep an eye out on the water level as the water does rise. But not to panic, these gates do activate. What that means, Floodgate 3 will shut down completely, raising up Floodgate 4, opening up flood control, keeping the water balanced every time. So it will never flood out here again. They do a real good job at protecting the river. You're going to see the Esquire Tavern here on my right here. The second floor here, the oldest bar in San Antonio, opened up in 1933, the day after Prohibition ended. They do have the longest wooden bar in the state of Texas, which is over 100 feet long. The year scope wooden bar. And we're back at the Aztec Theater, guys. We are coming to the end of our tour. You guys enjoyed the ride? Had a good time out here? I want to say thank you very much, Rodney Gorey and Cruz, for joining us on the beautiful river walk on this beautiful Sunday. At this time, please take a look around your seats. Make sure you have all your personal belongings, like your sunglasses, your phones, your bags. Make sure you got everything with you. Just please remain seated until like dock and tight on this boat for your safety. And for a job well done, my friends, kissing your captain is allowed. It's accepted and greatly, truly appreciated. Once again, my name is George. Guys, you have a beautiful Sunday. Enjoy the rest of your day. You guys are awesome. Thank you very much. Anytime, you can be tight on the boat. Thank you.